Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. This episode, we're going to continue our coverage of our February satellite and radio communications-themed issue, technical articles, and product features. As a reminder, the cover story is a sub-terahertz MIMO testbed for 6G research written by Keysight. And so, Eric, what do we have for tech briefs? Well, thanks, Pat. And uh, well, with uh, what has to be one of my favorite company names, we have a tech brief from Ladybug Technologies that describes the 50 to 75 gigahertz power sensor, and that promises to be the first in a family of high-frequency sensors that Ladybug comes out with. Uh, we also have a wideband millimeter wave production testing solution from TMY Tech that covers 6 to 44 gigahertz and targets 5G, 6G, SATCOM, and radar sensor testing. And finally, Micro Lambda Wireless introduced a gig filter that provides 80 megahertz minimum tunable notch at minus 40 dBc from 6 to 20 gigahertz. So some interesting products there. Yeah, and so we only had one product feature this month, a Mimic Power Amplifier for LEO satellite downlinks from MMTRON. This company has developed a family of Mimic Power Amplifiers and Low Noise Amplifiers for both satellites and uh, gateway terminals. And this is their latest PA for a gateway downlink that covers 17.3 to 21.2 gigahertz. It's designed to provide 31 dBm of output power with, at the 1 dB compression point and have high linearity and high power added efficiency. And so turning to the news, uh, more acquisition activity. Uh, Renaissance Electronics and Altium announced that they have entered into an agreement for Renaissance to acquire Altium by way of scheme of arrangement under Australian law. I really had to look that one up. I didn't know what it meant. So a scheme of arrangement can be used to enable a bidder to acquire 100% of the shares of a company directly from the shareholders. So it's effectively a takeover, but buying all the shares. And this acquisition will enable the companies to establish an integrated and open electronics system design and lifecycle management platform that allows for collaboration across components, subsystem, and system level design. So a big kind of a big change in the industry here, I think, where a component company is buying a simulation and design company. And in other acquisition news, BAE Systems received the necessary regulatory approvals to successfully complete the acquisition of Ball Aerospace, and they will operate under BAE Systems' U.S. business as a new sector called Space and Mission Systems. Eric, what did you see in the news? Well, in uh, I think what has to be viewed as good news for the industry, the White House announced plans to spend $11 billion dollars on semiconductor-related R&D and said it's launching the $5 billion National Semiconductor Technology Center. And all that's part of the Chips and Science Act that was approved in August 2022. Uh, so it's good to see progress on that front. We also have an announcement from FirstNet Authority and their network partner AT&T plans to invest $8 billion over the next 10 years to expand and evolve the FirstNet public safety network. And the goal is to get public safety personnel and first responders on a 5G standalone network to improve and expand capability, coverage, and services. Uh, so that's an ambitious undertaking. For events this weekend, I'm heading to Barcelona to Mobile World Congress to catch up on 5G advance and 6G efforts. Plus, there'll be a lot on AI and cloud services. Now, there's a lot of pre-show news coming in. Keysight and Rodian Schwartz kind of be highlighting their Wi-Fi 7, their 5G NTN, 5G RedCap, and 6G testing capabilities, plus AI and digital twins. Ericsson announced an extensive enhancement of its radio, transport, and antenna portfolio with 12 new hardware and software solutions for communication service providers to deploy high-performing, sustainable, and open networks. Viavi and Broadcom expanded RIC testbed as a service to advanced digital twin environments. And in collaboration with Sony Semiconductor, Rodian Schwartz has successfully validated and verified Sony's Altair device for its NTN NB IoT capability. So Eric, how about you for uh, events? Well, Microwave Journal is doing a panel on March 26th entitled, Will Flat Panel Beam Steering Arrays Meet the SATCOM Challenge? And if you'd like your company to participate on this panel, please contact us. Uh, I think there still are one or two spots left. Uh, also, EDICon Online Educational Days 
kick off on April the 24th with our PCB Interconnect EMC EMI theme track. So keep an eye out for registration. It'll be opening soon. Uh, and that wraps up this episode. Our sponsor is RFMW, and RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave products, and now power management. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. And remember, as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you aren't already a reader. And thanks for watching, and please join us next time for another Frequency Matters.